Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to chapter 15. So this chapter is all about uh, mechanisms of microbial pathogenicity. And so there's a lot of definitions in this chapter. So the first couple of slides are going to be on definitions. Um, the first definition is what is a disease? It's a condition in which the normal structure and function of the body are damaged or impaired. An infection is successful colonization by a microorganism. Signs are things that we can measure. Um, so measurable things associated with disease. So like your temperature, your breathing rate. Um, whereas symptoms are things that you might feel that we can't measure, pain or nausea. Those are not things that we typically measure. We might ask you on a scale of one to 10, what is your pain, but we can't see it. It's something that you feel. A syndrome is a collection of signs and symptoms that are characteristic of a same disease. Asymptomatic or subclinical means that the infection or disease um, doesn't present any signs or symptoms. So you may have a disease, but you don't have any signs or symptoms of that disease, which can be very problematic. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So an infectious disease is a disease that's caused. Um, by the direct effect of a pathogen. Um, infectious diseases can be communicable. A communicable infectious disease is able to spread from person to person, um, not always via direct contact. It can also be via fomites, um, indirect mechanisms like fomites. Uh, remember, a fomite is a non-living material that gets the disease on it, like a Kleenex or a doorknob, that can then be transmitted from one individual to another. A latrogenic disease is a disease that is contracted as a result of a medical procedure. So um, during a catheterization, an individual could uh, potentially get a UTI if during that procedure microbes that can cause UTIs um, like pseudomonas were able to get into that urethra. A nosocomial infection is an infection acquired in a hospital setting. Um, a nosocomial infection is one in which you have an individual that is already immunocompromised in the hospital. And because there are numbers of infectious agents typically in hospitals, um, an infectious agent gets transmitted to that patient, um, potentially from another hospital worker, um, or because um, that the individual is maybe taking a stroll around the hospital to get some exercise. Um, and sometimes nosocomial infections can actually be, they're acquired in a hospital, but they can be part of the patient's normal flora. Zoonotic diseases are diseases that are transmitted from animal to human. So rabies is a zoonotic disease. And then we have non-communicable diseases. These are diseases that can't be spread from person to person. So if it's a non-communicable, you're not going to get it from somebody else. An example of a non-communicable disease would be um, botulism. Botulism can't be transmitted from one individual to another. So if you have a patient that has botulism, they're not going to pass that disease on to you. Typically, non-communicable diseases are diseases that um, don't come from animals or other humans. They come from the environment, like dirt um, is an example of an environment where a non-communicable disease might 
typically reside. That might be their normal reservoir. Diseases progress through different stages. So we have an incubatory stage where um, an individual has been infected, but the individual does not have any signs or symptoms. So the period from point of infection to them actually showing signs and symptoms is incubation. So the incubation period can actually determine a lot of times how fast or how far a disease can spread. If incubation is very short, the disease doesn't travel very fast, typically. Um, and the reason for that, or doesn't travel very far, and the reason for that is if you have a short incubation period um, from time that you are infected to the time you are ill, then you're probably not going to get very far. If, if you get infected um, and within 24 hours you're laying down sick, you're not going to go very far. But if the incubation period is like um, two weeks, then you might actually go visit family and during that time you can spread the disease and then go back home. And in that way, um, the infection can get spread much further. The prodromal phase is the phase where the individual starts feeling signs of illness. So they might start feeling lethargic. So that would be more of a symptom. Um, they might get a little fever. That would be a sign. They might start um, getting a little bit pale, which would be um, a sign because you can actually measure that. Um, but they still can do the majority of their normal daily activities. Period of illness is when the disease is obvious and severe. So this is when the individual is not able to do their normal duties. They want to lay down. They want to rest. They need to rest. Um, they might have fever. They might have shortness of breath, whatever else um, is associated with the disease. And then we have the period of decline. The signs and symptoms start to go away. So this is kind of like the prodromal phase, except for it's on the other end. So again, you still have some symptoms. You still might feel tired. You might still be a little pale. You may have a small fever. Um, so you have some signs, you have some symptoms, but everything is decreasing. So you're starting to feel better. Um, and then uh, finally, the last phase is the convalescence phase. And in this one, the individual is feeling back to their normal self. They may still cough once in a while. And in that coughing, they may be still able to potentially um, pass some germs on, but in general, they're back to normal. And so incubation, during incubation, prodromal um, illness and decline, a patient is very able to pass on the disease, specifically in these three, um, but incubation potentially, and sometimes even in the convalescence period right after the disease has finished. Um, they still might be passing on a few leftover germs from their body. Diseases can be described as acute or chronic, and some diseases can be even described as latent. An acute disease is a disease that just develops very rapidly, and the symptoms are very, very severe. But in general, acute diseases, they're very fast, and they wipe your body down, they take out your immune system, and then they go away. So an example of an acute disease would be um, Ebola. It's very fast. It comes on fast, wipes you out, and you may recover, 
but you may not. Um, a better example, one that we can all really uh, relate to here, would be the stomach flu. Think about when you have serious um, vomiting, nausea, and diarrhea from the stomach flu. That comes on very quick and it goes away just as quick. So you, you start, you might feel fine at eight in the morning, but then at noon you start feeling you know, kind of queasy. At two, you start throwing up. By six, you're throwing up. You're having diarrhea. You think your world's going to end. By about eight or nine that night, you're still feeling sick. You might not be throwing up as much. You go to sleep. The next morning, you feel much better. That's an acute disease. Chronic diseases are diseases that linger for long periods of time. They are slower to develop and they recede slower. So an example of a chronic disease would be something like tuberculosis. So it takes time to develop and it takes a long time to get rid of as well. A latent disease is one that um, can lie dormant in your system. So it might be active and then it might just go back and become dormant and then it might become active again. Typically, um, it becomes active during stressful situations or stressful periods and um, if you are already immunocompromised. So an example of a latent disease would be um, herpes simplex or cold sores. So you can have an outbreak you may have the disease, you may not have an outbreak for three or four years, and then all of a sudden, something in your life changes. Maybe you become more stressed, um, something happens, and you have an outbreak. And then it goes away just as fast. I mean, it might come, and then after about a week, it goes away, and you might not have another outbreak for 10 or 15 years for that matter. I'm going to stop here because it's been a 12 minute video and we're going to talk about um, Cook and how he came up with his postulates to determine that specific microbes cause specific diseases, which is really important in epidemiology. All right. Have a great day and I will um, get the next video started. Bye.